one of the things that I found truly amazing was Jamie Foxx's uh, recollection of the story of the idea of seeing a musician play uh, when he was younger and how the musician lost himself in the music. And that triggered the idea of him wanting to be a musician. And I wanted to ask each of you, uh, your actors, so was there a moment like that where you saw a performance or a comedian or, or, or a movie that triggered that exact same passion? When I first uh, saw people doing improv in Chicago, really making something up on the spot and working together as a team, and there is sort of a lot of strange overlap between improv and jazz. Um, hmm. jazz, yeah. jazz is still good the next day. <laughs> <laughs> like, do it the time and don't go back. But um, that magical feeling of see when I first moved to Chicago and seeing people doing that, and, and the people I saw when I first went, the people who were on stage were like Steve Carell and Stephen Colbert and Amy Sedaris, and it was kind of, you know, incredible. Well, I was already uh, engaged in the profession um, and living in New York, but uh, one day I went to the public theater to see Ruby D in the performance of Wedding Band. Wow. And I, I shall never forget how she stood center stage in full light, but she was so focused on what the scene was, she disappeared. Oh. And she was standing on stage in full light. You know, in those those mid-teens, going to the Kennedy Center and seeing James Earl Jones in Steinbeck's A Mice and Men and being the last one in the theater when everyone it has left, and I'm just sitting there weeping in tears, saying, oh, I feel so bad. This is wonderful. <laughs> I want people to feel like that. You know, and also going to the Oslo Theater and seeing, you know, Twelfth Night and in this beautiful jewel box theater and seeing the, you know, it's too tough a knot for me to untie. You're like, oh my gosh. I'll end on this. As I mentioned at the beginning of this interview was what this film did for me as somebody who's dealt with depression in my life. And, 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 and it's so incredible that you can watch a film be entertained by it and be so moved by it. I'm sitting next to my mm -hmm. wife watching it. I'm in tears. I'm like, I've never seen anybody visualize depression like that and, and negative voices. So could, could you each briefly speak on the idea of using a, a film like this as a platform to really put messages out there about people struggling with mental health? I think it's, you know, when you write a play, when you create a film, when you write a poem, when you write a book, uh, there may be an intention but there's subtler aspects to that intention that maybe you as the creator had not considered. Mm. And it's wonderful when people can take from it what they need. We're all so much more than just uh, our physical. You know, we're, we're soul and spirit and, and that's the most fragile and most important makeup of, you know, of our being. So, um, and I think sometimes all of, all of, if, if you're not aware, the spirit knows, and it knows what we need, and it knows what you need, and uh, and you got it in fuller measure than maybe someone else. But I got it in just an awareness, you know, an awareness, depending on wherever I might be 